Hey you, welcome to Make For Others, where we make all kinds of stuff with all kinds of tools and surprise all kinds of people. I'm Dave, and in this episode, we build a Star Wars Boba Fett jetpack for my friend George. It's hard to believe it's been about two years since I made George a Boba Fett helmet. Since then, he's gotten a lot of use out of it. So much so that it made me wonder what it would look like to go further. <laughs> what if I made George more of a costume, but something that would be easier to wear than a full-blown Boba Fett cosplay? Let's say on the Star Wars fan spectrum, you'd have someone with a t-shirt and fond memories on one end and a full-blown movie accurate cosplay on the other. And maybe they only respond if you call them by that character name. Having a helmet would be somewhere here, and I'd want to move George further in this direction. But something easy and comfortable. Let's call it business casual cosplay. Now Boba Fett's whole outfit is chock full of iconic elements. And after the helmet, the next most recognizable piece is, in my opinion, the jetpack. So I decided to make that for him. How I'm making it is based on the tools and supplies that are available to me. Now if you want to make it a completely different way that works for you, that's great. While relearning how to create 3D objects in a CAD program is on my to-do list, for this project I found a 3D model online and opened it in Pepecora, which is a program that breaks 3D files down into 2D elements that can then be printed out and glued together to make that 3D object. You can add and adjust connection tabs and numbers on edges so it's easier to know what goes where. Since the jetpack has a lot of surfaces and details, it would take a really long time to cut out all the individual parts. So I did some tests on exporting the information from Pepecora into Adobe Illustrator, and then converting those files into a format that my Silhouette Cameo could open and read, so all the cutting and scoring could be done by the machine. Not only does this help this part of the process go a lot faster, it also makes all the parts much more precise than anything I could ever do by hand which is really helpful with a build with this many surfaces that all connect. Because the more precise it can be in the beginning, the easier it makes things later. Wearing noise canceling headphones also helps. I'm using cardstock since it can better handle the process of being folded and glued while retaining shape compared to regular copy paper. Also, it should be possible to do all these steps with all the parts printed out so that the numbers are already on the pages but with different computer programs on different refresh schedules and the level of complexity on some of these parts, it just ended up being easier for me to write the numbers by hand. Once all the parts were cut and numbered, it was time to start putting together. <laughs> Spending a little time organizing the parts saved a lot of time in the upcoming days. Yeah, days. <laughs> there are a lot of parts. Getting closer to the finish line, at least paper-wise, if you compare it to the Omega Supreme project from uh, a while ago. This is more complicated, not just from a piece count. That was a collection of pieces that then got assembled into a bigger object, where this is a lot of pieces that are all one object, like everything relates to everything. The glue that I'm using is a, a quick dry. These tweezers are great because they get in places where I wouldn't be able to. Using the tweezers let me bounce between different parts so I can set something up have it held together, move on to a different area, and I can be working on two, three, or four different areas. And they also apply equal force across longer areas. If I was just applying pressure with my, with my fingers, it would be really easy to warp it, or it would be uneven, or it wouldn't be a consistent connection. If this isn't as good as it could be, that's gonna affect it over here, because this will get wonky, and then when that gets wonky, it'll get wonky over here, and everything just scales. <laughs> this is, paper, there are going to be problems. I'm just trying to minimize the problems and then when there are issues that need to be fixed, I just am fixing the problems that I have to, not the ones that I could have avoided. But all in all, it's coming along. I know it looks close, but I've noticed that the further I go, the slower I have to go just because it's no longer just a part A connect to part B and then set that aside and then move on to the next thing. Now it's like, okay, here's a part that has to connect to A, B, C, D, and E. But where it gets interesting is when you've got two different things that want to go different directions and you're trying to connect them with another piece. This has been a lot easier than the first time I did it with uh, the jetpack for my son. So if you're doing something for the first time and you're like, ah, oh, this is frustrating or oh, I did it wrong, I gotta do it again. 
Yeah, we, we all go through that. Like, keep going. Because then you get to a point where you're, you've learned stuff and you can apply that to the next time. So that's where I am. I'm still learning stuff. And this has gone a lot easier than the last time. It's not going to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect. And that's okay. I'll, I'll figure it out. Just about done with connecting all the parts together and some of the pieces got warped a little bit uh, because of all the pushing and pulling and connecting to multiple pieces so what i did was i got it to where the form needed to be with some support structure underneath and then cut out the warp parts remeasured the area and then made a new piece to cover all that so it's still going to look good it's, it's going to be as flat as possible we'll probably have to make some more adjustments later but that's not a big deal almost ready to move on to the next part, which is covering all of it with a protective coat of glue. The next step is to strengthen the cardstock before we do some other stuff to it. Right now the cardstock is relatively fragile and easy to warp and I'm going to do two or three coats of glue over the whole thing so that it's strengthened and I'm using a slower dry glue so then the hope is that by the time I'm done brushing, it has time to settle out and smooth and then dry. This stuff will dry well. It won't soak into the cardstock as much and that'll create almost like a shell of strength around the cardstock before I start doing fiberglass on the inside to strengthen it even more. Some of these areas got a little bit warped in the process. As I was closing up this whole thing, it just got tougher and tougher to pop stuff out as things got bent inward. So what I'm gonna do is, except for these areas that got bent a little bit, I'm gonna do the two or three coats of glue. And then, since I have to cut out parts of the back anyway, I'm gonna cut those parts out so I can pop out the parts that got dented. Do two or three coats of glue on those, and then be good to go. After I began this project, we had to start social distancing. And so many things changed for all of us. And because of that, and the fact that I make all kinds of stuff with all kinds of materials and processes, I tend to get supplies as I need them. So because of all of that, I can't finish this project right now. Please keep watching. But I do have a solution. Just because things aren't the way they've been, doesn't mean I need to stop or quit. It just means that moving forward, it's gonna look a little bit different than I'm used to. And I'm gonna keep moving forward. So what's that mean? Well, specific to this channel to make for others, usually I make a thing and then I surprise someone and then I tell you about it. Right now I just need to rearrange the steps a little bit. So having said that, surprise, George, you're getting a Boba Fett jetpack, hopefully sometime soon. It won't look like this, it'll be done. It'll have thrusters and missiles and you know, all kinds of other cool stuff. I look forward to giving it to you and giving you a hug and you know, Boba Fettin' you up. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Is that an action verb? Boba Fettin' you up. Probably not. For the rest of you, since I usually talk you through what I did, I actually have the jetpack I made for my son. So I took some pictures of that process and I'm gonna show you how I go from this to this. And yes, I currently am surrounded by jetpacks and it feels, it feels pretty good. The next step will be fiberglassing the inside of the jetpack, uh, which will make it really durable and still lightweight. After making it sturdy, I'll use a light coat of the fiberglass epoxy on the outside so that the cardstock is completely covered up. With some of the larger surfaces getting a little wonky through the process, it would take a really long time to smooth them out and try to match them with their opposite surfaces. So instead, I'll cut acrylic to match the shape of those surfaces, glue them, spray a few coats of primer, spackle to hide where those surfaces don't meet perfectly, and then sand them smooth. Some of the parts that have curved surfaces wouldn't look as good if I made them with cardstock. So the thrusters and a few of the other smaller parts are gonna be 3D printed. With the previous jetpack, my friend Dan took the reference materials and the measurements I gave him and made the missile part out of wood on a lathe. He used Tupelo wood because it's good for detail work. And it's also really lightweight. 
The only reason I remember Dan made the missile out of Tupelo wood is because Tupelo is just a really fun word to say. Tupelo. <laughs> this is so funny. After he finished making it, I drilled a hole at the bottom of it and then screwed in a PVC tube so that it could be attached to the main body and also disconnected for storage and travel. That connector at the bottom makes this really easy to do. Once all the parts were ready, it was time for one more coat of primer. Then it was time for all the spray paints. With the jetpack body, the colors that took up the most space got put down first. Taking the time to mask everything well is definitely worth the effort. An LED, wires, and battery got a very simple install because I wanted to be able to switch it out later if it wasn't bright enough. But it turned out to be plenty bright. What was really helpful is right before I was going to do all these uh, smaller graphics and detail work, the Star Wars Power of Costume Traveling Exhibition arrived in town. And I got to take lots and lots and lots <laughs> of reference photos and see everything in person, which was a lot of fun. Also got to walk around and appreciate all the other costumes and props. The level of care and detail that got put into each and every one of them is crazy. Seriously, it's really impressive. Like the helmet build, some of the weathering process to make it look old and used was done with a silver paint pen, and then I applied paint washes in areas. Weathering is always fun because it really brings props to life and it's the last thing to do, which means the piece is almost done. A few other details are that I inserted and then painted this piece of wood uh, back here. It got screwed into the fiberglass and I did that because then I was able to attach the buckles that plugged into that uh, the backpack harness that uh, my son wore. And the reason I'd put the wood in is so that it would it could handle the stress and wear and tear and all that other stuff. And this piano wire makes it really easy to hang it up for display when well, not in use. The belt at the bottom keeps it from swinging around. So this is where the first one ended up and it's kind of like what George is going to get. If you've seen previous episodes then you know I like the challenge of making new things. So right now it might feel like a repeat because I've made one of these before. But I'm going to try some new things for this project to take it to the next level and also test them out for some other ideas that I have for future projects. I can't talk about those projects right now because they are still surprises in the making but do click that subscribe button so you can find out. Now the jetpack needs to attach to George. So similar to what I did with the old backpack and the Fortnite Loot Llama build, I'll build a harness with buckles. Then with the help of his lovely wife Jody, we'll get a green hoodie his size to hide the harness and I'll make openings in the back so the buckles can come out and be attached to the jetpack. Since Boba Fett is wearing what kind of looks like a massive turtleneck, I'll make that for George to wear separate from the hoodie and then maybe a few silkscreen prints on the hoodie that reference design elements from the armor. Then, George will have a business casual Boba Fett costume to wear to all of his favorite events. Last time, I surprised George by having everything at his work desk. This time, because George and I try to get lunch once a month at our favorite restaurant since college, I'd get everything to his wife early so she could wear all of it. Then, I'd pick up George for lunch where he would be surprised to see Boba Fett. <laughs> Then we'd put everything on him to wear through lunch. I think Jody would be up for that. I could also be wrong. This project so far is going well. And while it does look different than what I originally thought, that's not gonna stop me from continuing to move forward. We're all in a weird place right now, and it's not always gonna be this way. And I think one of the ways that we get through it is by figuring out how to continue to do the things that we enjoy, which for a lot of us is continuing to make for others.